pretty much the entire digital media ecosystem that myself and a lot of other millennial journalists came up in has been completely hollowed out. And it's not just digital media. I gotta just let her repeat that sentence because I love it so much. It's like kind of sweet dessert just <laughs> entering my body. <laughs> Save it from the cameras are off. The system update's still running. You're updating us a little too much on the system here, Glenn. I gotta say, <laughs> too many system updates. <laughs> Animating every one of my cells. Dude, what? <laughs> so, I don't know even where to start on this strange saga. Glenn Greenwald really hates Taylor Lorenz. A lot of the right really hates Taylor Lorenz, but Glenn Greenwald especially, he's kind of been doing this whole, like, let's celebrate Taylor Lorenz's tears. Yes, Taylor Lorenz needs to suffer. I want Taylor Lorenz to be of no other uh, journalist in America, the one who suffers the most. I don't, like, understand why specifically Taylor Lorenz over so many other journalists. Taylor Lorenz, who specifically usually covers internet culture, uh, you know, and, and does write for an outlet that I know Glenn Greenwald absolutely despises. Taylor Renz also famously is the person who wrote the first big article on Higher Eichek, aka Libs at TikTok, and Glenn got really, really upset about that entire investigation into who exactly Higher Reichek was. Uh, he believes that Libs at TikTok should be protected and remain anonymous, and that uh, no matter how big Libs at TikTok and Higher Reichek's empire became, uh, that there should never be any uh, threat to someone's uh, ability to uh, troll and post liberal cringe uh, anonymously on the internet, uh, while of course ignoring the fact that Libs of TikTok, Higher I Check, was stating that Glenn Greenwald is considered the godfather of Libs of TikTok, and I'm sure all of you know that Libs of TikTok at this point has been pretty well documented to be a horrifying uh, stochastic terrorist uh, who uses her massive platform uh, to basically uh, consistently vilify LGBTQ plus people as groomers or pedophiles simply for existing, and in so doing, when she does that, uh, they get bomb threats, death threats, all that kind of stuff. She will post the addresses of the uh, the hospital, she'll post addresses of children's hospitals, addresses of schools, public information, yes, but when you specifically state this teacher is a pedophile and a groomer, that's a lie, uh, and then add, this is uh, where you can find them, uh, and then add they're coming for your kids and stuff, well then yes, uh, a certain percentage of your audience, especially if your audience becomes bigger and better, uh, sorry, bigger and bigger, that percentage is going to become larger and larger, is going to go and uh, commit acts of violence. Um, so yeah, that's one of the reasons why Glenn Greenwald, I think, has particularly been targeting uh, Taylor Renz, because Glenn Greenwald wants to defend and protect Libs to TikTok and all the really fucked up stuff that Libs to TikTok does. Hi everyone, apparently Glenn Greenwald has posted a 15 minute manifesto about me to the internet. So I thought we could watch it together. Let's check it out. So first of all, he tweets, the titan of American journalism, Taylor Lorenz, just issued her state of the media address, mourning the mass layoffs sweeping her industry. It's worth hearing. Thanks for saying it's worth hearing, Glenn. Nothing could more clearly expose the pathologies within US media that have led to their well-deserved collapse. Okay, well. Let's see what this man has to say. One of the people who has decided that she is a success story, who regards herself as one of the giants of American journalism. Okay, I definitely don't regard myself as a giant of American journalism. Is Taylor Lorenz, who used to work at the New York Times, caused one drama after the next. Caused one drama after the next. If by that you mean broke page one stories. Then made her way to the Washington Post. She basically, as we're gonna show you, started her career by hanging outside of houses that are filled with 16 and 17 year and 18 year old TikTok influencers. Okay, what? Oh, that's a pretty big hole. Like, this is sussy, isn't it? Kind of weird, you know? She started her career hanging out with 18 year olds, 17 year olds, 16 year olds, 15 year olds, and just a lot of very young people. I mean, you could say that she was reporting, but it does call into question on what. I where she would try and induce them to s speak to her and give her secrets. What? <laughs> uh, first of all, I started my career in 2009 as a blogger and internet personality. Uh, last I checked, TikTok was not around then. I don't know what he's talking about. Hang I also have never hung out outside TikTok houses. She would go and get 17-year-olds canceled. And so she built a TikTok platform just by using the names over and over of 17 year old boys who were extremely popular among adolescent girls, even though she was 40. 40, <laughs> what? <laughs> First of all, they're obsessed with making me older than I am. It's so weird. It's so deeply weird because it's like, people I went to high school with and elementary school with like are on the internet and have said like many times, like we went to high school with Taylor, we went to middle school with Taylor. 
Um, I'm obviously a millennial. My work history like very publicly begins in 2009. Everyone knows when I graduated college. So it's like, if I'm 40, like wh where's this like missing decade in my life anyway? Also, what 17 year olds am I getting canceled? I don't even know what you're talking about. I actually have my TikTok following from Musical.ly. I Musical.ly, I was amused the 2016 election, but that's a story for another day. I used to do social media on Musical.ly and my name was Mark Zuckerberg, by the way, on Musical.ly. When doing it, and somehow this convinced her that she's some kind of like giant of American journalism who now is in a position to issue state of the media addresses. Okay, the only person he used to, like, be a journalist. What is this? This seems so very weird. Like, I understand wanting to attack someone's credibility because you adore what they're going after. So, in this case, Taylor went after High Right Chick, lives with TikTok. Glenn Greenwald's like, oh, okay, well, then now you're enemy number one. But by doing it this way, so bizarre. Like, being like, ah, uh, she's really old. Like, maybe 40 plus. Uh, she hangs out with teenagers. Sussy. Uh, what is she doing? She wants to pretend she's important by hanging out like that's this is honestly the the level of This is why you're trying to tear this person and their entire career down Issuing a state of the media address here. It seems to be Glenn similar to the way the president issues a state of the union address And so she went to TikTok to talk about the reason why her entire generation basically has proven to be complete failures Wait, my entire generation. What generation am I in, Glenn? What generation am I in? Am I in your generation? I'm pretty sure you're in like your 50s or something. So am I in my 40s and I'm in your generation or am I actually a millennial? Make it make sense. And I think it's really- Millennials can now be in their early 40s. The oldest millennials, they're, they're in their early 40s. Yeah, millennials are getting damn old. I should say that. Even Gen Zs are getting old. You know, Gen Zs are starting to be like, Hey, there's memes coming out where I don't fully understand them. I don't totally understand the whole skidibidibidibidibidi toilet thing. And then it's like, yep, that's, it happens, don't worry. Worth listening to what has, she has to say. Obviously not because there's any wisdom in it, but because it illustrates the pathologies and sicknesses that have caused the collapse of that part of the media and the unbelievable inability to accept responsibility, even though she purports to say some of this is our fault, you'll see in the way in which she says it, it's really just the pretense of accepting responsibility. This is so weird. But not actually any attempt to grapple with the true pathologies of media. The entire journalism industry is basically in a free fall. Today, the Los Angeles Times laid off 115 employees. They wiped out their entire DC bureau in an election year. They laid off pretty much all of their sports teams. They killed their entire tech and business section. They laid off breaking news writers, social media editors. The list goes on. But what's really dark is this is just the latest in months and months and months of layoffs in the media industry. In fact, tens of thousands. What is wrong with this statement? This is true. This is not about how millennials aren't getting their fair share because we're super lazy or Gen Z's entitled and they think they should not have to work. Like I always see the right going after that too, being like there's another TikTok, it's viral. Apparently this Gen Zer is complaining about the fact that they have to commute one hour to and from work every day and go into work every day, as if that's not something that everyone had to grow up with. And in that video, when you watch it, it's like someone saying like, this is really hard. I don't know how people do this. Like I, I was always told if I go to school, I work hard, I get a good education, I get a job, uh, I'll, I'll be paid well. But instead, I'm riddled with debt. Uh, I have to work every single hour, even the hours after I get off work. And then I have to commute for hours to get to work. And then I do all this and I'm not saving any money. I'm supposed to be putting money away to be able to one day afford a down payment on a house. I can't do that. I can barely make ends meet. It, 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 I struggle to, to make the amount of money I need to every month to make rent. Those, those videos, I, I don't understand seeing one of those videos and immediately thinking, entitled. That's entitlement, right? That, you see that? Yeah, they don't have the work ethic. Uh, if anything, because I've had to work a lot of shitty part-time jobs, I've had to suffer at points in my life, and I've also had a lot of privilege in my life or I had people who could bail me out and parents who could help me or stuff like that. So that's a massive amount of privilege. Any time that shit's been shitty, I've been thinking to myself, I hope other people don't have to go through the shit I'm going through right now because this is shitty. It's not great, you know? 
So it's not like I ever looked upon having to do shitty dishwashing jobs or shitty construction jobs and then afterwards being like, everyone should have to suffer like I did. Yeah, that one time when I was coughing all night because I got fiberglass, I think, in my lungs or something, every single person would have to experience that at least once. So they're soft, all right? That's what we're doing. We're raising soft generations who don't know what it is to inhale fiberglass. That's all there is to it. Of journalists have been laid off in the past year. Major media companies like BuzzFeed News have completely shuttered their news operations. Time Magazine also just laid off a ton of people and oh, Sports Illustrated basically shut down last week. Pretty much the entire digital media ecosystem that myself and a lot of other millennial journalists came up in has been completely hollowed out. And it's not just digital media. I gotta just let her repeat that sentence because I love it so much. It's like kind of sweet dessert just <laughs> entering my body. <laughs> Save it from the cameras are off. The system update's still running. You're updating us a little too much on the system here, Glenn. I gotta say, <laughs> too many system updates. <laughs> and animating every one of my cells. Dude, what? Listen to this sentence. Entire digital media ecosystem that myself and a lot of- I guess Taylor TikToks are like the water of life for him, eh? That blue water? I don't want to do spoilers for Dune too. Uh, yeah, but I mean, some of you read the book. You'll know what I'm talking about. Of other millennial journalists came up in has been completely hollowed out. And it's not- The area of media that myself and a lot of my fellow digital millennial journalists has come up and have been completely hollowed out. That yes. Yeah, it's wild to watch. It doesn't make me happy. It scares the fuck out of me. I love video games. I think people who work in the video game industry should be treated well. I think they should have good pay. I think they should have, like, fucking reasonable hours, be able to have lives outside of the video game industry and see their families, raise kids, all that kind of shit. It's really fucked up to see how bad the gaming industry who make the products I love, how they treat the people who make those games, and how everyone is just getting fucking fired en masse, because it's like, they can. Yeah, you're not unionized, you don't have worker protection, we don't have any real a uh, way to protect or you're just contract workers all of you were simply hired for the six to eight months and you're going to take that contract because hey it's really hard out there so yeah you take the contract where it's done and you're all fired and boom that was the end of it and you know we got some crunch we got some games and then now suicide squad is released to the public to i'm sure what will be stellar and amazing reviews because it was not rushed in any way shape or form and not just trying to bleed franchises dry for every last penny and drop yeah that is exactly what has happened. Just digital media sites. Local news has been obliterated. The newspaper industry is cratering. Radio is essentially dead aside from NPR, which has been gutted. Meanwhile, hundreds of workers at Condé Nast, the parent company of pretty much every major magazine from GQ to Vogue to The New Yorker to Vanity Fair are on strike because they're also facing impending layoffs. Even mainstream national media outlets. <laughs> it wasn't rushed. It took six years. Fair enough. That was a bad example, but there are some some games that get rushed and are shitty. That one took forever and was still shitty. <laughs> Owned by billionaires like the Washington Post, where I work, and the Atlantic, where I used to work, have done layoffs. Okay, so we're just watching my TikTok video again at this point. It's crazy, by the way, like how much content these right wingers have generated off my single TikTok video. Just have to say that. If you're a young journalist today, there's almost no on-ramp to traditional journalism. Even if you do get a job, journalist salaries have been stagnant and even declined. And by the way, we don't make that much to begin with. Also, how many fields do you know right now that people want absolutely nothing to do with because of how fucked up they are? And journalism is one of them. If you happen to be a journalist or, dare I say, a politician, because I'm always advocating, can you run in local level governments? You should do it, especially if you're a leftist, a socialist, a communist, whatever you are. Hey, run for local level. Run at your, sorry, run at your local level. Get into government because you can make a lot of effective changes that will benefit a lot of people. But that's a really tough thing for people, like, in terms of what are my prospects here? Well, your prospects are that you're not going to make a lot of money in your profession. It's going to be very, very hard to break into. They are slashing jobs left and right. If you do make it in there, you won't be paid a lot. And once you're in there, you will be targeted by every single person who opposes any of the reporting you're doing, either just if you're being completely 100% honest and just saying, I'm just reporting a story. There's no bias or slant whatsoever. Here's the story. And they don't want that story getting out. A ton of people are going to come after you, especially if you're a woman. If you're a woman and you want to be a journalist, listen to every single woman who has worked in this industry who's speaking out about it now and being like, I just face 
unbelievable amounts of harassment, of death threats, of doxing, of rape threats, of all this kind of stuff. And a lot of the time, I'm not even specifically targeting this group. I may have written a story that says, hey, guess what? The Gripers have showed up at this and they're meeting with the president and this is bad. And that's enough for just thousands of people to be like, whoa, she needs to be blanked and blank and then blank blank, you know, that kind of shit. Um, that's... That's not a very, like, you know, worthwhile prospect for anyone who's like, what should I do? You should get into journalism because we need journalists. We need real journalists who are willing to uncover these really important stories. But you won't be paid a lot and you'll get a lot of death threats and doxing and people will threaten you and your family. And, and yeah, it'll be very, very taxing on you mentally. And then even if you do a good job, people like Glenn Greenwald could suddenly make you their, like, you know, personal target and, and do entire specials on how disgusting it is that you're making TikTok videos acknowledging all of this. I don't think people understand how bad the world would be without journalists. Oh, people understand that the world would oh and you see complete assholes succeed just because they're assholes i mean that's also a disheartening point you know especially when you witness or watch just the monstrous growth of very mediocre people uh but they grow incredibly rapidly because they're just massive ass assholes online it's a lot more work to have to want to be a either accountable and do research and, and back up your beliefs uh you know on data and information that you that you in ingest and then change your opinions based on once you you recognize that there's actually evidence to the contrary that's a lot more difficult than just like dropping slurs and, and apparently paying people to drive cars into rivers fucking Aiden Ross like what the fuck <laughs> but that shit's inflammatory it's inflammatory and everyone's like lol let's let's check it out what's gonna happen now <laughs> be bad without journalists in fact that's exactly the problem we have is that none of these people are actually journalists they do not perform the journalistic function the journalistic function and if you go and look at what people for hundreds of years have been describing as the core purpose of the press, the reason there's a freedom of the press guaranteeing the First Amendment is because we need a mechanism to confront and undermine and subvert and check institutions of authority and the most powerful people. Yes, government, essentially. That's why it was put in place, right? Um, but I agree. Being able to call corporations and hold corporations to account, I don't think anyone's disagreeing with that. Um, it's weird you're framing it this way, though, because you are defending corporate power here. Like, make no mistake, if Glenn Greenwald is mad that Taylor Lorenz is pointing out that, hey, there is mass layoffs happening, a lot of workers are getting fired in all these different industries, and it's really hard now to come up in these industries because of these problems, and especially because, at the end of the day, they can do this, they have the power to do this, that's her doing the thing that Glenn Greenwald is talking about. That's her, like, I'm not trying to, like, I'm not Taylor Lorenz number one, you know, fan account or anything like that. But I'm saying in this instance, that TikTok and what he's calling out, he's trying to say that, like, look at her, you know, defending the, the right for BuzzFeed to exist, you know, standing up for the corporations. That's what she's doing here. And it's like, that's the exact opposite of what she's doing. She's saying that these corporations shouldn't work like dictatorships and have the ability to just fire thousands and thousands of their employees because they want. And for you to want to like run cover for that, I mean, unless he's doing it as uh, he doesn't recognize, like, uh, I, I don't even want to give the guy the benefit of the doubt at this point because he's just fucking, he's gone so far for so long. In our country, that's what journalism is. So I agree with him. The problem is all Glenn does is simp for those institutions and powerful people. I'm just saying, like, I get it. Glenn used to be a journalist, but now he just makes Rumble content. And by the way, Rumble is backed by Peter Thiel. Like, he just, like, all this man does is enrich these powerful people. So yes, I totally agree that a lot of journalists have abdicated their duties and they're not using their platform to speak truth to power. I literally talk about that in my video. I don't know if he's gonna show that part. But like, that's you, Glenn. That's you. As four. It's to bring them down pegs. It's to expose their secrets. That these people who work in these corporations have done the opposite of that. They're the ones who are causing our country to be without journalists. Even though they bear the HR title of journalists because they have done the opposite of what that function is. They serve power. They disseminate its propaganda. They do not challenge or investigate these institutions of authority. The people they investigate and challenge are ordinary citizens in the country. Okay, hold on. <laughs> ordinary citizens. By ordinary citizens, like, who are you talking about? Is Mark Zuckerberg an ordinary citizen? Is Elon Musk an ordinary citizen? 
or are they powerful billionaires? Teo Lorenz's biggest story as a journalist was uncovering the private citizen who ran the Libs of TikTok account. Okay. By the way, Glenn Greenwald made that story possible. He technically, technically docks Libs of TikTok, but doesn't want to take credit for that. You know, I know Tim Pool spent a bunch of money getting billboards in Times Square saying Taylor Lorenz docks lives a TikTok, but you could have said Glenn Greenwald did that. This is so funny. First of all, the lives of TikTok story was not even remotely my biggest story, like in any capacity. But Haya Rychek is not a private citizen. She is a powerful influencer making millions of dollars by pushing anti-LGBTQ hate. Um, at the point that I had written about her, she had been on Tucker Carlson multiple times. She had given interviews to the New York Post. Ron DeSantis's press secretary said that Haya was directly informing the anti-LGBTQ laws in Florida. Not to mention, uh, she said that Glenn Greenwald was also known as the grandfather of Libs of TikTok. And we should add people like Joe Rogan had also promoted Libs of TikTok. She was incredibly mainstream and she was having real world consequences. A lot of what she was doing, aka someone would make a TikTok where they're like, hey, by the way, I happen to be LGBTQ+, uh, I'm non-binary, uh, I use they, them pronouns. She would take that teacher or that nurse or that doctor or someone in a school district. She would post that video and then add that this person is a groomer. They are grooming children, aka trying to have a sexual relationship with them. And in so doing directly putting a target on their back or putting a target on the school district's back or putting a target on the children's hospital's back multiple times over and over. And if they are directly collaborating, in this case, Libs of TikTok, with uh, government officials, I mean, this is beyond newsworthy, right? You can't simply say, this is a private individual who ran a, a YouTube channel and was targeted. That's all that this is, right? It's like, no, that, that's not true. A lot of these individuals, whether they're influencers, whether they are people with YouTube channels, at a certain point, we have to accept that once they grow to a certain size, they have the same reach, the same ability to reach multiple people and spread messaging as traditional networks. I know it's new technology. Sometimes that confuses people. But if you reach more people on your podcast, and I know it's just like you at your home, you got a computer, I turn on a couple lights, I hit play and I hit this and I hit that and boom, podcast done, I hit out there. If Joe Rogan can do that and reach 11 million people, that is more more than some national news networks. And yes, he, he can say whatever he wants. He's just a dude bro hanging out, but it does real world consequences and ramifications if he's spreading dangerous medical advice to his audience using that massive platform. If someone was on TV or the news doing that every single night, if they were just like, by the way, COVID's not real. By the way, the vaccine, you shouldn't take it if you're healthy. By the way, we are totally, uh, you know, we don't understand the damage that vaccination can do. By the way, uh, you know, vaccines, I don't know if they can actually prevent the spread of COVID. They lied to us. By the way, the Fauci ouchie. By the way, by the way, uh, is, if you're doing that on a regular basis, a percentage of the people listening to you are most likely going to take your advice. And of that percentage, some of those people will get sick and die. That's just the reality of what having these massive platforms eventually becomes. So at that point, you're a public figure. If Joe Rogan is talking about you multiple times on the show, you're on Fox News constantly, you're giving interviews to the right wing media, you're fundraising, you're taking investment from Seth Dillon then you're not a private figure anymore. You're a powerful public person that should be reported on. And that's what Glenn seems to kind of like ignore. Like he frames, he frames these like really powerful people in American politics, basically all the right wing ones as like, oh, they're just like average citizens, like Elon Musk, Peter Thiel, Haya Rychek, uh, Matt Walsh, uh, Ben Shapiro. These are just private citizens. What are you talking about? No, that's the whole point is that they're not private citizens. And yes, I did write about higher right checks identity because I think at that point, you are no longer a private citizen and you don't deserve to be operating an anonymous account that's influencing state legislation and, you know, getting teachers fired across the country, by the way, because Haya was actually doxing other trans like and LGBTQ teachers and getting them fired and harassed and all this stuff. And by the way, they are all under the publishing of the largest social media companies on the planet. In the case of Joe Rogan, Spotify is the largest music streaming service on planet Earth. This is this is not some like, oh yeah, well these independent journalists and these independent publishers, these private citizens, I mean, now we're coming after them rather than holding truth to power. Spotify is the biggest, literally the largest streaming platform possible. That it is corporate media by very definition. This is a corporation and it is a media apparatus. I, I don't understand that defense either. You don't get to operate in impunity like that when nobody knows who you are. So I think it's in the public interest for people to know who someone like that is.
I totally stand by that story 100% and I will never not stand by that story. So it's just interesting who Glenn considers private citizens. Hey Lorenz has never challenged or exposed any lies or secret or corruption in the CIA or in the FBI. Okay, what? <laughs> But that shouldn't, like, even if that was true, I don't know. I, again, I'm not a huge, like, I haven't read the entire works of Taylor Lorenz or anything. But even if that was true, that doesn't validate any of your other points. You don't get to say, like, well, Lance of the Serfs has never directly exposed or done any infiltration into CIA. You're right. I haven't. I have not infiltrated the CIA. I think I still have a right to have an opinion on certain things. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't cover the CIA or FBI, bro. <laughs> Jalen Lorenz has never exposed the CIA. I don't, what, that's not even what I write about. I'm a technology journalist. Do you understand what that means? I cover technology and culture. I write about power on the internet. I don't write about like national security. Go <laughs> call Ken Klippenstein. Or in Wall Street. I actually have reported on Wall Street, but I guess he did, I guess he missed those stories. Or in Silicon Valley, I think her- Or in Silicon Valley, okay, hold up. What? I've written about powerful Silicon Valley billionaires all the time. Glenn is very actually aware of my reporting on that because he's like defended those billionaires against my reporting. Second biggest story is that one time she was in the app Clubhouse and she heard somebody use the word retarded and she ran to Twitter and told like a tattletale and she attributed it to Mark Andreessen and it turned out I know you're trying to make it sound like she's a high school student, but man, do you ever come across as like, you know, high school drama by talking this way. <laughs> and then she tattled and then and then she she was like a hall monitor. Yeah. And, and, and then then mommy and daddy got mad because of the tattletale. Now, Mark Andreessen had not said that. So she had to correct her second biggest story. Uh, what that I never even wrote about that. I never even wrote about that. I don't even know what he's talking about. He's literally making up a story. No, oh, great. Please Google, please go through my entire byline history and tell me where I ever reported this. Tell me where I ever wrote a story about what he's talking about. I think he's talking about when I shared a tweet from another reporter once where I confused Mark Andreessen and Ben Horowitz, who are two bald, powerful billionaires that like own this like powerful venture capital firm together. And I confused one bald white guy for the other bald white guy in a single tweet once. And then people were like, oh no, it wasn't Mark Andreessen that said that it was Ben Horowitz that said it. And I was like, oh, sorry, like the other bald white guy said it. Like in a tweet that was up for maybe 120 seconds, like five years ago. That's my second biggest story. Like, I've had stories that like made people pass laws. <laughs> I never even wrote this story. Glenn, if you're going to say that I wrote stories, come with links. Come with the links. Bill Lorenz has more corrections appended to her stories than almost any person working in media. And I have almost no corrections. What are you talking about? Yeah, and this all comes off as really painfully petty and weird and strange and like, you know, almost stalkery. <laughs> Once again, you just made up a story that I've never written out of nowhere. The, the amazing thing about that is her stories are so trivial that it's almost impossible to even get an editor to care enough to correct them. And yet. OK, clearly this man like doesn't read my stories. She has a mountain of them, long ones, big ones, major ones. What are you talking about? I don't go on my massive in size, about? huge this ones. doesn't exist. Look at my Girthy stories. ones. He's like, just like making shit up out of his brain. And yet she seems to think she's the success story. And on some, on some level, bizarrely, she kind of is, given that she's at least been able to draw attention to herself just because she's so, she's just such an extreme, kind of, she's almost like high camp at this point. I have to say that I kind of look, come to appreciate Taylor Lorenz in the way that just these kind of people can have this sort of campy, iconic appeal. Campy, oh, camp iconic is. appeal? Thank you, Glenn. Thank you. But there's nothing <sighs> I mean, I mean, you just gotta listen to John Waters for camp, okay? The tragically ludicrous, the ludicrously tragic, you know, that's, that's camp. Positive about her journalistically, except for the fact that she provides a window into the pathology that is causing it to collapse. 
So she is right that society is worse off without journalists. And the problem is, is that the more people employed by these big media corporations, the less journalists we have. You guys, the more journalists that media companies employ, the less journalists we have. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. And that's why I say it is not just well-deserved, but a cause for celebration to watch these outlets that have done far more misleading and far more propagandizing and far more attacking of ordinary citizens than powerful. Okay, so he's just never going to show the part of my video where I talk about all this, I guess. Like, he just cut that whole part out of the video. Because he's saying all this stuff that I say Play the in video. my video. Show the receipts. And address in my video. But he, he's not playing it. So I'm just kind of curious. Like, he, like, he's talking about all this stuff that I talk about in my video. And yet he's conveniently crafted out of his video. So break down and collapse and disintegrate because they're anti-journalism and not journalism. And because of their failures, people are paying increasing attention to independent media, people who have offered something that the public is interested in. To OK, wait a second. Glenn, ding, 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 ding. That's my entire beat. What you are describing, independent media, people building audiences on the Internet. That is what I write about. I think, I think actually, I feel like this man is maybe just confused. The like entire journalism industry is basically in a free fall. Today, the Los Angeles Times laid off 115 employees. They wiped out their entire DC bureau in an election year. They laid off pretty much all of their sports teams. They killed their entire tech and business section. They laid off breaking news writers, social media editors, the list goes on. But what's really dark is this is just the latest in months and months and months of layoffs in the media industry. In fact, tens of thousands of journalists have been laid off in the past year. Major media companies like BuzzFeed News have completely shuttered their news operations. Time Magazine also just laid off a ton of people and oh, Sports Illustrated basically shut down last week. Pretty much the entire digital media ecosystem that myself and a lot of other millennial journalists came up in has been completely hollowed out. And it's not just digital media sites. Local news has been obliterated. The newspaper industry is cratering. Radio is essentially dead aside from NPR, which has been gutted. Meanwhile, hundreds of workers at Condé Nast the parent company of pretty much every major magazine from GQ to Vogue to The New Yorker to Vanity Fair are on strike because they're also facing impending layoffs. Even mainstream national media outlets owned by billionaires like The Washington Post, where I work, and The Atlantic, where I used to work, have done layoffs. If you're a young journalist... Man, Glenn Greenwald is a slime ball. Like, that's really gross. This, he, this is not at all the way he's framing it. There's the, the, in no way is Taylor Renz being like, all right, so now I want to defend the rich and powerful. So I'm going to make a story right now about how it's actually a bad thing that we're losing all of these journalists and outlets. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? This is pretty clearly he's talking about how this is a, a pretty unprecedented and dangerous phenomenon that's happening. The, that all of these companies that operate in the realm of both digital media, but also just in local journalism are collapsing. The mass layoffs, downsizing, replacing uh, workers with AI, people who aren't unionized are losing their jobs. Like, it's it's the complete opposite of the way uh, Glenn is framing it. Journalists say there's almost no on-ramp to traditional journalism. Even if you do get a job, journalists' salaries have been stagnant and even declined. And by the way, we don't make that much to begin with. I don't think people understand how bad the world would be without journalists. And let me just preface this by saying, for people that don't know my background, I did not go to journalism school. I built my own audience on the internet. I came from outside journalism and started as a blogger and then entered into legacy journalism, a system that I have been incredibly, incredibly critical of pretty much my entire career. So I'm definitely not some mainstream media defender. And I think the rise of citizen journalism on apps like TikTok, Instagram, and elsewhere has overwhelmingly been a positive thing. The journalism industry is overrun with elite, underqualified, yeah, this is wild because he's actually defending the very thing that Glenn Greenwald is pretending that is like his position where he's like, uh, yeah, apparently private citizens aren't allowed to be able to do uh, their own form of reporting and that they're against the, the very idea of non-corporate institutions. It's like, no, she's directly standing up for, you know, private citizens doing journalism and the ability to do that being based on the fact that they have an audience that grows on these social media platforms. She's actually defending that. He lied.
rich, entitled Nepo babies, okay? And that part of it is terrible. But that's not most journalists. And the majority of journalists losing their jobs in situations like this are the working journalists that are doing these investigations of police brutality or investigating corporations or holding power to account or doing really thoughtful, brilliant cultural commentary. I don't want to live in a world where all of the news is delivered through 60 second TikTok videos with retention editing. And I think there's a but what about the AI ones? We just learned about those AI TikTok videos that apparently they tell you about conspiracies. You know, how they, they, they froze like some sausage that became sentient millions of years ago and now the US government has defrosted it and then that sausage is using the power of like Comex and Pepto-Bismol to take over the vaccination program. Like, you know, that, that kind of stuff. That could be the future of journalism. I mean, like Elon Musk seems to be working as quickly as he can to make X effectively just be the misinformation network of the universe. You know, do I need to learn uh, the, the wrong take? Well, uh, there's no an app for that. Yes, it's the wrong take app. Yeah, you just go there and whatever thing you think, you put it out there and you'll you'll be quickly rebuttaled by a whole bunch of groipers and Nazis who probably tell you to unalive yourself. A ton of really talented journalists that are also just not great like social media people. I think of some of my friends who are journalists who do really deep investigations <laughs> that sausage was Henry reporting <laughs> or sit through hour long city council <laughs> meetings to, you know, hold some local politician to account. That's really important work and it's work that somebody should pay for and it's work that's not rewarded by these social media algorithms. I would love if everyone could become yeah, and honestly, uh, we're all to blame, okay? I, I'm as guilty as any of you. I, I will, like a moth to the flame, suddenly join into a stream when it's like some massive drama meltdown, like, you know, or battle, and then you're like, oh, okay, I gotta see what's going on here. But then when it's like, okay, so we need to actually tell you about what's going on in Sudan, it's like, yes, this is important, I'm ready, I'm here to learn, and I will pay attention. Oh, this video's three minutes long. Did you, did you have like a, I don't know, like a, just maybe like a paragraph I could, I could look at and maybe retweet and feel good about myself for a little while on that one. But yeah, I don't know if I really, really have three minutes. It's a, it's a long time to dedicate to, to learning about this. Um, independent journalists, but the economics are just not there. It's really, really hard to amass a subscriber base and then retain that subscriber base over time when you're doing investigative work. And that we were all there during the horse porn links Vosh. Oh God, no one could look away. That, that it, it was just a train wreck of the highest order. Just it continuously got worse and worse and worse. And every single day that went by, it's like, well, I guess uh, today we don't have to talk about this thing. And it's like, yes, we do. Because right now, as you're talking about it, Lance, there's a live stream that's also talking about it that has like 50,000 people and they're all doing all these horse memes and that's happening right now so you're like uh okay i guess this is what we're talking about that's if you don't get sued out of existence by the way it was a train that kept crashing i know story of a billion i know it was a train that kept crashing and never stopped and i will admit a lot of these traditional media companies have accelerated their own demise they ignored the internet for years they're condescending to content creators and people outside their mainstream ecosystem they constantly kowtow to corporate and political power they have these false and deluded notions of objectivity which by the way doesn't exist and they push a lot of really racist sexist regressive crap but that's not even why a lot of them are going out of business a lot of them are going out of business fundamentally because the economics of the media ecosystem are broken most news companies Companies used to monetize by advertising and those ad dollars have been completely subsumed by Facebook and Google and tech giants. I don't really know where that leads us other than a pretty dire place where there's really no check on corporate and political power in this country. I did write a lot about this in my book called Extremely Online, but I do think that journalism is something a lot of people won't realize they miss until it's gone. The entire journalism. Yeah. I agree with that. I mean, there's obviously a lot of people who have an incentive to not want that. Like, there's a lot of people who just think like, hey, we can do away with all mainstream press. It's all lies. It's all just mainstream garbage. They're manufacturing consent. You said it before, right? So fuck them. Get rid of all of it. Get rid of all of that. It's like, yeah, but I don't want to get rid of the very idea of journalists or journalists having large outlets in which to release very vital information. I think that is uh, paramount to having a healthy and robust society. I think that there should be people who have the ability to investigate systems and structures of power to hold them accountable. And there needs to be outlets for people who are whistleblowers who work within these systems themselves to be able to like release that information that is vital to the health of a, of a healthy society um I, I i don't think the solution to all this is to just be like mainstream media bad let it all burn and then what are we going to be left with you know a bunch of crowders pools daily wires you know 
Uh, I, I, I'm not even saying that like only misinformation will come from the right. It won't. It'll, it'll come from the left as well. I mean, you know, live streamers are for for all their good intentions are literally just human beings sitting before you know hundreds of people or sometimes thousands of people uh, and talking for four hours at a time. And you know, you do your best. You're you're kind of trying to parse out all the fake links that you get sent by people, being like, Lance, this just happened. Did you know that Russia just exploded? Here's the link in Twitter. It's totally authentic. And you're like, this is not authentic, even if it's called authentic news for 69 Groyper daddy that doesn't mean it's authentic that, that, yeah I know it's got a blue check mark that you can buy those now just, just trust me this never happened did, 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 please stop 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 sending the link but like yeah that that's that that filterability is only as good as any given one person so the, the opinion pieces that are uh fucking streamers depend on the actual work of journalists to be able to provide information that is credible that is sourced uh that that is uh backed up by you know multiple potentially other sources as well secondary sources after that uh in order to build a case one that would uh, pass the scrutiny of a potential lawsuit uh which is the biggest fear of course by any journalistic outlet if you're going to release a story whether or not it is true and they've done their due diligence that that's that's all really i mean you know the, the the long end of the short of this rant is if you enjoy the work of democracy now or those kind of places support them they they, they depend on you uh the viewers almost exclusively because uh, i i still haven't seen ads on democracy now you know um th that 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 part thank you so much for watching everybody can you please hit the like and subscribe button and maybe leave a comment it really does help the videos out but first the people who produce everything you see before you and make this entire channel possible amazing fletch anna loves riley arian mccarthy cheryl alvarez doug caddy everything important hagbard Salim, multi mondi omni peanut butter blondie political puppy quiet 185 rachel k riley and anna roller dragon ruby k cernicus spinach monster Stellar Vision, Sebastian Demel, Trevbot.exe, Words Greenwood, and Travis McClinton. And also, thank you to every other person who helps fund this show. Their names are on the screen right now. It would not be possible without every single one of them. We cannot thank you enough. And if you want to join the Patreon, please come to patreon.com slash thesurfs and, and, and help us exist.